Hardys. Welcome to the Hardys Hotline. I'm I'm feeling I, I'm feeling very I'm feeling very empty right here. There there's something missing. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I'm over here on the other screen. <laughs> Dang. Well, we knew this was gonna happen, right? <laughs> oh. We're back to the way things usually are, which is nice in a way, but it was sure fun having her right here, right? <laughs> I am Cami, the hook tardy. And, and I'm know. Sarah. I'm Sarah. I'm the hawk eyed hardy. And we are bringing you season 10, episode 3, episode 101. Mm -hmm. Oh, baby. <laughs> I know when when they first released like the titles I was really I was like oh she's gonna have a baby in episode three that's awesome it's like nope well, <laughs> just kidding <laughs> just teasing <laughs> so but I'm really glad that we're seeing a lot of her pregnancy so it's like there's that trade-off like I want to see the baby I want to know who the baby is <laughs> I don't want to say what because like it doesn't really matter if it's a boy or a girl it's going to be exciting either way but you want to meet the baby. Yeah. You want to have that big reveal. And and yet I'm loving that we get to see the pregnancy, especially since we didn't have a lot of Elizabeth's pregnancy. True. Yeah, we got the very beginning and the very end. Mm -hmm. So uh yeah, we didn't really we didn't really see yeah. that much. So yeah, it's kind of so nice it's, to it's see. It's nice this. that they it's nice they built in several episodes of pregnancy. Have you changed your vote as to whether it's a boy or a girl? I still think it should be twins. I feel like I feel like in this era, it's it's very easy to be surprised by twins. True. So it, it was very easy for them to not know back then. It would be unlikely to not know now. <laughs> so back then it's like, you know, modern day shows, you're not gonna have that reaction very often to be yeah, surprised by that. Be a surprise. Um but, you know, if it's not, I still, I just, I still feel like it's a better move to maybe go boy so they can go girl if Elizabeth has a second one and have her have both. But I, like, like we talked about before, Lee would just be the perfect girl dad. Oh, right here. So I just, yeah. He would I mean, be right is, here on that little girl. <laughs> I mean, I feel like Lee's going to be, have, you know, Lee's going to be wrapped around any baby's finger, but pretty much pretty just much. by his sheer reactions during this episode, um, with him taking on setting up a nursery and him being even more, I mean, granted, Rosemary says she's not going big on this, even though she is, but it is clear that, that Lee is kind of taking the lead oh he's that. being very much an overthinker as rosemary said he's thinking big yeah yeah so i know this would not have worked storyline wise since it's so early in the season but mm -hmm. i have to admit i think that the birth would have been the perfect storyline for episode 100 because well it's, yeah that would have been it's a big plot line so i i, I guarantee that was a discussion I guarantee oh, they're like, we them. have a baby coming. Let's do that for episode 100. And I'm sure it just, you know, I, I'm i sure that the biggest reason was to show more of the pregnancy and mm -hmm. to have that be a part of the show. So let's talk about that pregnancy. Because <laughs> I remember Pascal saying in an interview, we get to see a pregnancy Rosemary style. <laughs> <laughs> which people have been asking for for years yeah. and especially pascal and cabin have wanted to showcase that what that would be and yeah. i'm 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 really sure that they had a lot of input on this it you know from oh. different interviews they've said over the years they've really given a lot of ideas as to how their characters would handle these situations definitely yeah and you know it's funny because when when it showed a clip of her getting the facial, I thought that that was Rosemary pampering herself. But oh. no, it was a surprise. It was the, dis it was the distraction. 
Yeah, because they said it was a pregnancy rosemary style and going and getting a facial is exactly what I picture rosemary doing <laughs> during a pregnancy. So exactly. <laughs> I I'm curious because very recently we've discovered that oh it's 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 pretty difficult to surprise elizabeth uh so how do you think she did on the other on the other end of things actually coordinating the surprise i think she did better <laughs> much better than being surprised <laughs> cuz rosemary seemed genuinely shocked yeah i she didn't I don't think she suspected a thing. And <laughs> well, again, to be fair, Elizabeth never suspected a thing. He had to tell her because she just yeah, wouldn't he go had in to the tell saloon. Her. She just wouldn't go in the saloon. Yeah, but that's that's a different situation, you know, that you know, he had to tell her because she wouldn't go. You're ruining yeah. this. You're ruining the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying all the surprises in Hope Valley. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun when surprises happen. Especially I loved it when they had the background ex when they had the background actors sneaking past I, I admit, with the big arches of flowers. I admit I replayed that three or four times because I was trying to see if it was anybody we'd recognize, whether it be <laughs> I I almost wonder if it was behind the scenes people that like crew that Oh, we're making a little cameo or something. Actors, I was maybe? like, is it is it anybody I might recognize from interviews or something? Or um, it was just too funny to see that little that one guy doing the exaggerating tiptoe. <laughs> well, and at first I thought it was like Hickam or something because I was like, that's such an exaggerated move. It has to be it has to somebody be we know. <laughs> um, which side note, loving him this year, he's <laughs> hilarious. He is. Yeah, he he had some really great facial expressions in this episode. I loved. And I can I just throw this out there? I'm really hoping he's a groomsman for Lucas or something he like to be. I mean, they've they've had a pretty, I mean, not close relationship. They're they working have, right there. You know? They've worked together for so long and really kind of supported each other. And I that would just be nice. I I would like to see him standing up there next to next to Lee or something. Frankly, I'm a little surprised that Lucas asked Lee to be the best man. Because they just haven't had as much they haven't had as much time together. Yeah. yeah. At least on screen. Right. There may be a whole bunch of double dates that we've missed. <laughs> between seasons <laughs> has to be a, has a to bunch be of going. dinners in the backyard and a bunch of dinners at queen at the queen of hearts definitely yeah. well on this subject really fast i'm not sure where we'll be i, I know we got to get through that for this episode as well and then there's going to be more episodes too but i kind of hope there's a way maybe henry is also in the wedding party Well, he's not going to jail now, so. He's not too fond of Lucas either. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so... I think he is, but isn't. I think it's that he's more upset with himself still, I think, than Lucas. Yeah, but... let's, let's, let's talk about Henry for a second since we're on him. So I had to write this down because I thought it was really, really interesting You've taken away the opportunity to pay my own bill. And that's exactly what we were talking about. He's not justifying anymore. He's not he's he not trying to he's not trying to get himself out of any No, he guilt. wants to make amends. He wants to be accountable. Yeah. It's he wants really this weight to be lifted off of him by earning it. Right. Even if it means going to jail for six years. Yeah. Yeah. The um it's really interesting. Also, he said, if I had wanted help, I would have asked. <laughs> the second that right. came out of his mouth, out of my mouth, pop popped. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> well, 
yeah, I don't think he is there yet. Look no, I don't. Look in the eye and tell me that Henry Gowan would have asked Lucas for help in getting out of jail time. No. <laughs> and that's why I think, I think I'm hoping that in this arc, because I still, like, I can't see as a storytelling method, like, how do you resolve this? How do you, you don't want him to go to jail as, as the writers, because yeah. he's your character and you need him in your show, right? Because he everybody loves him. loves him on the show he's a big part of the show so they obviously don't want to like write him out have him go to prison they can't really film him in prison for six years and keep that relevant Not really. so you have to get him out of it but how do you get him out of it and have him feel like he has made amends that he has paid his debt what what can happen there, there's obviously more that needs to happen this season yeah to help him maybe not resolve it maybe it can't be resolved in a year or two even maybe it's an ongoing process but but what direction do you take that I'm very very interested to see how you well, do that we've got Jerome out of the picture now and so last time I said maybe Jerome will have a heart attack <laughs> and he didn't have a literal heart attack but i think that lucas almost gave him a heart attack with the with the threat and lucas may be the best bluffer in hope valley oh my gosh i actually it was really cute when he asked elizabeth are you okay with that with me using some of my old tricks it was kind really of would have been Kind of would have been better to ask her that first, but you know. Yeah, yeah, that that would have been. But the fact that he even asked her at all, I thought oh, it was kind 100%. of adorable. Yeah, it yes. was kind of adorable. But I think that that brings him full circle to when we met him in season six. Mm -hmm. When we met him the first time, he was a full-blown gambler. Everything mm -hmm. was a game to him. Everything was a gamble. Even introducing himself to Elizabeth <laughs> and offering her a job. <laughs> oh my. But but you know, and then I and I specifically remember Elizabeth saying to Abigail, well, he is a card player. We need to mm -hmm. let let's let's show him how to gamble or something like that. And I think that that really kind of brings us full circle with how we met Lucas. Mm -hmm. We see him kind of coming back to it and using his old tricks, but like she For said, good. to save a friend. And then have him actually, I don't want to say regret it. I don't think he re regrets it exactly. I think he was double checking. But I think he, he, he had pause and he realized yeah. like, oh, me? Maybe that wasn't the right thing to do. Yeah, but I I loved it. I loved that he did it. And Especially... I have to say too, I liked how they wrote that that piece because uh -huh. you didn't know he was bluffing at first. Uh uh. And honestly, it didn't cross my mind until Jerome said, "Like I don't know if you're bluffing or not, but I'm not going to take that chance." It didn't hit me until as soon as he said that, I was like, oh, this he doesn't have anything. Okay. <laughs> it didn't hit me until Mike gave him the look and started opening the envelope. I went, oh. <laughs> but so I will say though, so looking back on it, uh -huh. did he actually give this envelope? to robert and tell robert to deliver it to him in front of jerome it's very possible but robert's not that great of an actor that's a really good point <laughs> not not javin not javin that's amazing <laughs> yeah Javin's I amazing i yeah. don't know how you say his name but he is a fantastic actor the character of robert he stinks as an actor. He's, yeah, no, he's, he's not he so right. Lie, he can't lie to he can't save lie. his life. 
Yeah. So I think I he think, just put it he put it in the mail. I think that he put it in the mail or he had somebody well, it was him. registered because he had to sign it. Yeah, it was a registered letter. So you send yourself a registered letter. Can I think can he you had somebody send letter? it? Can you send a registered letter with Ned? I don't know. But I think he he called somebody. I think he telephoned somebody and had them send it to him. Registered mail. Because the one like continuity piece that that made me kind of do a double take was I didn't think that Colin had a wife. I didn't think he oh, had you any wife. That, you didn't think he had a wife. Oh. I thought that he was saying that he, when they had that argument about why he would take the money to live comfortably, uh-huh. he didn't say anything about, so I can leave my family something. No. He said, so that I, I don't have, he, he actually made a comment, I think, in my memory about Henry having a child, about how he doesn't have anybody. And this was like his shot to just die in comfort. Right. So... So when they started talking about a widow, that could have been a whole part of the bluff. You'd think Jerome would have known, but. But Jerome doesn't really care about details like that. Once yeah. he has, once he has what he wants, he forgets yeah. about it. Yeah. And, but yeah, it was very sad when they said that Mr. McCory died. I thought, oh, I well, mean. We knew it was coming. But... Exactly. We knew it was coming. It is too bad. It's a very sad story when you know all that history and what they went through and how he was also grappling with the exact same feelings as Henry. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, I don't know exactly how they're going to resolve it, but Jerome has now dropped the charges. Henry's a free man and that's what bothers him so much. Because he doesn't know how to resolve his feelings. Yeah, he doesn't. He does doesn't he know how to make the amends now. Yeah, where does he go from here? But seeing Lucas use those tricks that he's so good at, especially in favor of Henry, it was it was cool. I, I it was I, really cool, and I, I hope it, it builds their relationship over time. Yeah, that he realizes that this is somebody who's got his back. Yeah, it'll be it'll be something that I think he'll kind of eat humble pie over. And he'll he'll come back kind of hat in hand and say, Lucas, I'm sorry. You you were right. Thank you. Okay. So there's another part about Henry. Okay. That ties to another storyline that happened in this episode. <laughs> I knew you were going there. <laughs> Well, because that actually makes me think if that could be tied to how he feels like he has made amends to the town. He brought them so new business. He brought in new business. He brought in new excitement and new life to the town. Yeah. In a, in a happy way and in a way that is promoting health for people that he, I don't know that he would say he cares about, but I'm sure, you know, he does. He, in a very weird way, from Bill. Bill and him started off in an extremely volatile relationship oh, to say the least to say the least and how are how ironic is that that now Henry he's trying saved to make Bill's him, life he he did he basically did so when, when you put it that way whoa <laughs> maybe that'll be somehow how it's all brought back together but so for anybody who's not following along what we're talking about here these springs the hot, hot springs. springs the kids went on a big science project here and Allie figured out that the blowing up of the mine that that explosion is what caused the hot springs to form can i just say i love them for doing that that's because- really cool I get so tired when any show brings something up out of nowhere. And mm-hmm. just this. Oh, we just have a hot springs now. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> gosh. And it's happened. It's happened so many times on so oh, many it, different shows. And, well, and I mean, it's not that you're always going to 
see the connections. Like in real life, things happen and you don't know why. Like yeah. you're not always going to know the connections. And so, yeah, you got to take it with a grain of salt sometimes. But, but that's the thing is that then when you do see the connections and it makes perfect sense and you're like, wow. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to know how they did this. If they were like, oh, here's, we just had an explosion. What can we make that have done later? Like what, how can we have there be any big consequences with an explosion later? And somebody goes, oh, it could form a hospital. Like, I mean, I just want to know how they got there. It's so interesting. Want to be a fly on the wall in the writer's room. I know. <laughs> I mean, we always do, but that we one. We always that, do, yes. In particular, that little tidbit Tidbit. sounds like it would just be so interesting to see all those stories weave together and I just I love them for writing it in I really do because really making a logical connection yes and not having (laughs) I got so excited I bumped my computer (laughs) and but not having the hot springs just appear out of nowhere you know to have the kids go in and discover how it happened and for them to say, the creek has always been here. We're just yeah. trying to figure out how the hot springs. What changed, are. yeah. Yeah, what changed? and I just, I, I loved it. I really, really did. So going on with those hot springs, we uh, met a young man who is quite knowledgeable about such things because he is going to the top school in the state. Which, which of think? course, of course, only, only has boys. <laughs> yeah, only has boys, of course. What I did not catch the name. No, it didn't, it didn't have a name, but he oh. said the top school in the state. Wouldn't it be the province? <laughs> I don't remember where he was from. Oh, he's from Philadelphia. He's, I so. was going to say, wasn't he from the, from the United States? Yeah, he's from Philadelphia. So, <laughs> Dodge that bullet. (laughs) But so So new characters for this season. But that actor, it's Mm -hmm. made I made this connection because I was watching commercials about One Calls the Heart in between watching Big Sky River. And this actor played Kevin's son, Griffin. Kevin was Boone. And this actor was Griffin in both movies of Big Sky, Big Sky River. And awesome. I went, that's why. That's, he's here. that's why he's familiar. <laughs> that's why he's familiar. And that's why he's here because he's already worked with Kevin. So that would be super fun to see if, um, if he, if they share any scenes in upcoming episodes. Yeah, because they didn't share a scene in this episode. So yeah, I that'd would. Be fun. I would want them to share a scene. I would, I really would. Yeah. Okay. So while we're on that subject, so yes, we have little Mr. Hoity Toity who's pretending to be so smart and he's copying Judge Avery so that he looks as authoritative as he does. And, but he's got quite a brain behind that cap. And he does. There's, there's a very interesting dynamic, especially between him and his mother. So if he goes to, I assume, a boarding school. Boarding school or a boys' school. Doesn't have to be a boarding school, but. Well, didn't she make a comment about, don't you want to go back to your school? Yeah. It just made it sound like, like back to live there. So it just made me wonder how much time they spend together. Mm-hmm. what their relationship well, but, is like but when toby said what do you do for fun he said i travel with my mother so i don't know how much you could get away with that at a boarding school maybe just during breaks i don't know so, it doesn't yeah. seem like she's intending to stay very long no which so this travel could be fairly quick that conversation was really interesting and uh, i'd say chilling honestly i mean that makes you say oh baby in a whole nother way in a whole <laughs> different way yeah yeah because... so what did you write the line down which one it was some 
that she said on the phone. It was something. Yes. Okay. I was like, These, I can paraphrase, but you've got it. I got it. <laughs> I've got it written down. These are nice people. Are you sure this is the only way? And then her facial expression changes into kind of a resolve. And then she says, I understand. Okay. So first of all, who is she in cahoots with? <laughs> well, this isn't about any specific person, clearly. It's about the town. Yeah, there's something up with the town that she's going after. What could you go after the whole town for? Swindling them out of the rights to the hot springs? Because she specifically mentioned the hot springs to Bill, saying that she was going west to settle her husband's affairs, and then she heard about the hot springs, and so she thought that they'd give them a try. So there have been a lot of people online who have been speculating that she doesn't even have a husband. That there. Well, that was my first. That was my first thought is that that was made up. That her um, husband made up, and and they're grifters, and she puts the boy in to. She puts Jamie in to kind of soften people up and then she goes in for the kill, if you will. So you think he's in on it to a certain degree? Like, what if somebody says something to him about his dad just dying? Yeah. Which it hasn't happened yet. I don't think that he's in on it for one reason. And that is he told his mother that he wants to stay. And, and she that's said, what gave her pause. That's what gave her pause. And she said, well, don't you want to go home? And I'm like, no, the air is different. I wrote it down. The air is different here, which I thought was really interesting because he just declined going to the library with the other kids saying they don't like me much. But then when she says, well, we'll be home soon. No, I don't want to leave. He's like, wait, 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 hold on. And then he says, the air is different. I thought, huh, are we talking about think... the, literal, the literal air or are we talking about the feeling of the place, you know? Do you think he could have something wrong with him? Ooh. I mean, she did say she thought that it might be helpful to go to the hot springs, I can't get past the, these are nice people. Are you sure this is the only way? I mean, you could take that, you could take that to mean, are you sure this is the only way to cure my son and she'll do anything for her son, even cheating these people out of money or something to save him right right but i mean that's a really good point maybe there is something wrong with him and, and that's why he only that line the air is, the different, air is here. different that's all that yeah. just made me pull back and think maybe there's something actually with him that's yeah, that's a really, really good point. I didn't even think about that. Look at you, Hawkeye. <laughs> I don't miss much. No, no, you don't. So speaking of not missing much, let's talk about, let's talk about the two people who uh, are missing quite a bit <laughs> between each other. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm... Um, I mean, Nathan's still making his hashtag Mountie rounds. Well, this is going to catch on eventually if we just say it enough times. We are going to make this catch on. If you, guys if, haven't, not... if you guys missed the last podcast, so. No, it was the first one. It was, it was the, season... the first one. That's it was right, the sorry. episode one, yeah. Season it premiere. Was one. We just feel like. Mounty rounds have taken on a new meaning when you've dated or had some sort of secret connection that you won't talk about with so many women in town. 
there are three women in town that he has been romantically attached to in some way. Mm -hmm. it, that I mean, yeah, Nathan's major is real. <laughs> so, okay, let's talk about this for a minute. Okay. <laughs> we still have no clue. No. Exactly, exactly what happened between them off camera at some point between seasons. But it must have been good. <laughs> It must have been something. Are we still so, holding? Are we still holding with the almost kiss theory? I I, ha I can't think of another. I I don't have another theory that I think makes as much sense as that. Yeah. Um, if you missed the last one, that's our theory. We have a theory that because Faith is saying there was nothing to end, but Nathan is saying you ended things. We have a theory that it was an almost kiss and that was likely during some sort of a medical examination or me or doctor patient discussion we don't have to go into full detail here i'm sorry Amy's I can't of Amy's replaying our theory in her head um but <laughs> it it has to be that because that is why faith is in complete denial that anything happened because in her she has to say in her mind that she never crossed any medical professional boundary hashtag wrong shoulder <laughs> was we did that on on the podcast right yes we did <laughs> that wasn't a private conversation no that was not a private conversation that was on the podcast wrong shoulder just like the wrong knee <laughs> yeah I, I i just feel like that's what happened but <laughs> Regardless of what happened, now he's insisting on doing her rounds with her. And she's saying, I'm granting you permission, Constable Grant. <laughs> and she's, she's, I love how she's literally taking the reins. Oh my. <laughs> on the wagon. You went there. Of I course. went there. You did. <laughs> um... But, you know, he is a little bit too busy chasing squirrels to actually make any moves on her. <laughs> oh, my. Okay. I don't, I don't think you caught it because you don't know it as well as I do. But I caught it in a second. They almost quoted word for word a scene between Anne and Gilbert in Anne 3, the continuing story, Anne of Green Gables. Do you remember? Do you, cause you just watched, we just watched it together. Yeah. Yes. Which, which, which line? So when they're at the beach and they see each other for the first time and then she starts to run toward him and falls flat and on falls. her face in the sand yeah. and he rushes up to her on his knees and says, are you all right? And she's laughing her head off and he starts laughing with her and says, nothing broken or bent i hope and she says only my pride and so faith says when nathan comes back with his figurative tail between his legs <laughs> and scout's literal tail between scout's <laughs> legs i don't think and scout was all that upset about it he had fun chasing the squirrel no but he probably got a <laughs> he probably got scolded yeah <laughs> but faith says nothing broken and he kind of wipes a hand over his face and goes just my pride and i went all right who was watching anna green gables three when they were writing this episode <laughs> i'm sure it was a nod just for you cammy i think it was <laughs> they knew <laughs> that i would be celebrating my 40th birthday with an anna of green gables birthday party Right a year now. later after they filmed it exactly absolutely they, they well, hey, i've it. been planning this for a year so that's true that's yeah. true it's 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 theoretically possible <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i still don't know what to make of these two i still I want to say like there isn't enough to get like fully into it yet but when they were standing there looking at just taking in the beauty of their surroundings, like 
the look on his face when he looked at her. Stealing glances. Oh yeah. It was yeah. it was pretty sweet. Yeah, he was stealing glances at her. So I'm not gonna do hashtag first respond quite yet. But okay. But you're yeah. but you're getting there. I'm getting there. Getting a little getting a little closer. I mean, it's kind of hard to go full in when she says, I'm only doing this because I like your dog. <laughs> well, he's a cute dog. Uh, yeah. Very cute dog. Very furry. Lot, lots very of cute. lots of fur to rumple. Very around. lovable. Very lovable. Very much. <laughs> so now and that very, Chloe, and very much not a mounty dog. <laughs> so now, Although, that, to be fair, Rip wasn't either. <laughs> Rip he, he was, was very good. lovable. <laughs> he, no, I say he wasn't a very good mounty dog. He didn't no. like. He just laid down and took a nap all the time. <laughs> like he didn't. He didn't chase the bad guys either. But he wasn't put in situations where he was supposed to either. That's so, a good point. That's a yeah. Good point. <laughs> so I, you can't you can't blame you can't blame Rip for that because Jack kept him as a pet. He wasn't trying to make him into a Mountie dog. A good point. Yeah. All right. So now can we go from the lovable four legged to the lovable? will be two-legged <laughs> just to clarify pretty sure the baby already has two legs even if it hasn't been born probably I, yeah but pro- we have, i mean it's likely yeah we we have not seen the baby on screen yet so, so we can't but, confirm it has two legs yet can't confirm, we'll, we'll but, let you know hardy's yes we'll so let we, you know when we find out <laughs> i think we'll all i will be hawk-eyed and watching and counting and updating i will update you all are you done (laughs) hashtag how many legs oh my gosh (laughs) all right so this brings me to the question of the day sarah that's the question how many legs no that is not (laughs) is it oh is it is it the wallpaper yes (laughs) so bunnies butterflies or lambs i i i would go bunnies you'd go bunnies i'd go bunnies not for me but like for rosemary lee i think bunnies i kind of thought a lamb would be sweet yeah but i was stuck between bunnies and and lambs i i don't i i don't think butterflies i i so much prefer the idea of I love apple. butterflies. In yeah, fact, I love butterflies, um, but not I, not for baby wallpaper. Well, I'm not really a wallpaper person, but oh. um, my my younger daughter Sophia, we we did have a butterfly theme for her nursery when she was born. You also knew she was a girl. I also knew she was a girl, and <laughs> funny story <laughs> because I hate gender stereotypes, but I also I was not convinced my first was a girl even though they told us she was I was like very much like are you like really like I just couldn't I didn't feel it like you know you just kind of like in your head before you find out I just had this thought that it was a boy it wasn't like a wish or a hope it was just that's what I thought it was Uh and there's been a lot of boys in the family so it just kind of like you had that mental kind of direction that your brain's going and so even though they said it was a girl, I was so, I was like, it's okay to buy stuff for a girl, but I was very much like the nursery is going to be neutral. The nursery has to be neutral because if it's, if it's born and it's a boy, I don't want it to be like really, really girly and have to repaint and go to all of that extent. So I was very adamant that it had to be a very neutral nursery. And so we did I was convinced by many people that wanted a very wanted me to go really girly <laughs> to do kind of an apricot color for part of the walls. At, but then I added like a brown, like a very dark brown trim, and we went with kind of a Winnie the Pooh kind of theme, which was was could go either way. Winnie the Pooh is very good for either. Yeah, but so the second time when it was a girl, I was like, I'm I'm going purple <laughs> and purple and butterflies. Yeah, girl. 
<laughs> I mean, it's hilarious because my younger one's more of a tomboy than. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So, there's my baby there's my baby nursery story there you go duly noted thank you <laughs> gotta add a little personal touch here that's <laughs> i don't i don't have i don't have any baby nursery stories so we're we're good there you're you're being spared <laughs> okay okay oh all right one i have to put this in did you realize with nathan and faith before we talk about the baby did you realize that when Faith suggested that she ask Mike to go oh. on the escort with her, with her instead of Nathan, that Nathan had the exact same reaction that Mike did? About, about Nathan, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, because Mike went, Nathan? And, and Nathan went, Mike. You know, so, yeah. For different reasons, I think I think it? Nathan's. I do. I, I I think Nathan's reasoning was, "What's Mike going to do to protect you if if a bandit tries to attack?" I agree, but I also think he's looking for excuses to spend time. Oh, with him. oh yes, agreed. Agreed. So I think that he and Mike are on the same page where that's con where that's concerned. I just hope that a natural solution presents itself to the bandit or to the time <laughs> Which um, one? like like for mike like for mike to naturally like find somebody else and not have it be this awkward love thing. triangle yeah we thought the love triangle was going to be nathan faith and may now it's i know and it's like it's it's mixed nathan, up on me and mike and faith but to be fair, it was like it was kind of Mike and Faith for a little bit last year, and so for like, a couple of episodes, it's fair for there to be some feelings there. But yeah, okay, back to oh. baby. So the surprise baby shower, the clipboard stacking—that was my that favorite was shot. So awesome! That was my favorite shot in the episode. Um, my favorite was all the people rushing by with all of the, all of the stuff for the party. Okay. That was probably a close, a close second, um, with the clipboards, but I also love just how intricately it, it showed all the women coming together for one common goal to support one of their own. You add in the fact that Elizabeth had shared that she was feeling very self-conscious and to really be like thoughtful about, I don't, I don't think she told them say this, but you know, like yeah. probably coach them to like, don't make any jokes. Like don't bring up the, the, un, you know, like sometimes there might be jokes about like, it's Oh, you're never, gonna sleep you're never going to sleep again. Or, you know, yeah. you're going to be up for the 3am feedings all the time. You're going to be so tired. Like don't make any jokes, just build her up. Don't help, do her, that. Help, her, <laughs> help her get excited. Um, and so all of them really pitching in together to do that. And then the added piece of just the coordination that that took and that they all realized that it would take that level of coordination to fool her. Yeah. I don't think they would have put that much effort in <laughs> for someone who wouldn't have noticed every little detail. Right. And then like Fiona going out the back door and running around to <laughs> the salon and all of that. Yeah. No, that, yeah. It was hysterical watching the antics. And so probably my favorite line. One cheek? No, actually. <laughs> I loved that. Only one cheek? Only one cheek? Yeah, just one at a time. One per visit. One per visit. <laughs> No, no. Okay. It, it goes a tiny bit deeper than that. For a natural born performer, think of motherhood as your greatest role. Because that's the way I think. Yeah. You know, and this is where I have a story. Okay. I remember when Kira was very little, she loved acting out Disney movies. And oh, that's so strange. 
I wonder where she learned a behavior like that. No clue. Nope. <laughs> but I have a video that I took of her pretending to be Anna and she actually knocked on the door and then sang the whole song. She was two years old at the time. And, and she's doing, so you can't understand every word, but you can tell she's singing the entire song. And she even put her lips up to the door. <laughs> Does it have to be a snowman? <laughs> it was precious. It was totally precious. And then but the one thing that really sticks out to me is she wanted to act out Tangled. And she had a yellow dress that had a, that had a tie. And so she used the tie to be the hair. And this is also when she was younger, she had much lighter hair. So it was actually mm -hmm. quite blonde. And so I started the camera. I sat beside her and she wrapped the tie around my hair and I said all of Flynn Rider's lines and we acted out the scene where Rapunzel heals Flynn's hand and I even put on Facebook what I when I posted it I knew I wouldn't have to give up acting when I became a mom so, <laughs> so there's my story because that's what I have been all about since I was four years old was acting and performing and singing and all of that. And, mm -hmm. you know, on a stage in church on film, yeah. whatever. And, and that's definitely Rosemary. So and that is definitely Rosemary. <laughs> and so that, that's that line spoke to me and whoever wrote that line needs a raise because <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> I loved that line. It was perfect. Yeah, yeah, it, it really spoke to me. Yeah. Nice. <sighs> and so one other thing that I would, one other thing that I would mention because she felt, Rosemary felt all of that hard work. She felt what, the effort the the results of all of the efforts and when elizabeth told her a big part of motherhood is supporting other mothers number mm, one i said that, amen I and hallelujah amen and hallelujah because we need that so badly oh, i don't i don't know where i'd be without my mom friends like I, no you know friends. no mm -mm. don't even want to think about it and yeah. then for her to say not only do I have a best friend who's like a sister to me, I have a whole family. And I just went, oh my gosh. Because in her own way, Rosemary has been there for the other ladies. Now, a lot of times it was pushed on them and they didn't want it. But Rosemary has taken the lead in a lot of things. And mm -hmm. it was really sweet for her to be on the receiving end this time, you know, and just for her yeah. to see that, especially because she came in as a stranger and she came in as some, as somebody that not some people took to her, but a whole lot of other people did not. Didn't. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's easy to forget. Like it, it feels like forever, but it also feels like yesterday. I, I think it, it is easy to forget, even 100 episodes in, that it's been 10 years. Yeah. You know, she came in mid-season one, and it's mid-season 10. And she almost stole Jack away from Elizabeth. Hey, I wasn't trying to bring that up. I'm just saying she's been there a long time. She is now, like, you, you, like she's a newcomer because she didn't live there her whole life, but she's been there a really long time she has and but i mean i bring that up because yeah at the beginning i hated her I oh yeah hated Absolutely. her and yeah. i absolutely adore her now yeah. i just i absolutely adore her and yeah. for her to feel the effects that she has become a part of the community and that all of these women would go through all this effort for her. It's, it's very touching. It really is. Yeah. 
And it just makes me think of the line she said last season. Wouldn't this be a wonderful place to raise a child? Yeah. So two things I want to say before we end. When she was talking to Lee after he revealed the crib and the rocking chair, which was so adorable. Can we talk? You know? Oh. Lydia was watching with me and she said, do you think my husband will do the nice things for me when I'm pregnant? I said, he better, honey, or he's not worthy of you. You know, I, he may not build things for you. Like you just don't know what kind of, what kind of talents he'll have, but yes, hopefully nice things. Yes. That's what I told her. I said, it'll look different, but I hope he does nice things for you. <laughs> but, um, when so when lee said you're going to be the perfect mother and then oh did elizabeth get to you too like, what are you talking about it was such a genuine reaction it and so for her to know that her husband has that much confidence in her ability to be a good mother it it was yeah. so precious but the one thing i want to end with i'm going to end us on a little note of intrigue the trunk, the oh, trunk yeah. that oh, yeah. we brought that. downstairs. So it mm -hmm. obviously has to do with her family. Has it to. It obviously has to do with this deep-seated turmoil about her mother. She didn't even want to open it. And she said, out with the past. And after Lee's head injury... He did. He wanted nothing but to look at the past mm -hmm. and and see what he could do to fix the past. And he wanted to relive the past and visit family and all of that. And she, at the cusp of having a baby, wants to bury the past. It's it's an interesting juxtaposition there. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be gotta be pretty tough but what would you have is photos mementos of her mother that her mother left behind maybe like a hope chest situation you know things that things that her mother put away for her to take with her when she got married I don't, I don't know I don't get the impression her mom cared that much I'm talking about I'm talking about when Rosemary was very very little. Well, didn't it sound like it, she was pretty I don't, little? It it sounded like she probably was pretty little when when she uh, when her mother took off. But you also have to remember that a lot of times people would start projects for their children even before they were born or right when they were born. And then often they finished them just in time for them to get married because it take because it took them so long to make that blanket. <laughs> so I don't know. It, I mean, it could be things that belonged to her mother that she put away for Rosemary it could yeah. be photos and mementos. I I have no idea. I'm shooting yeah. I'm shooting the breeze here. So I mean, I don't think they get rid of it, do you? They didn't get rid of it right then, but we well, don't I mean, see it. do you think do you think she'll go hide it somewhere and tell him she got rid of it? Do you think he'll well, say he, can't he got rid it of it? Currently. Well, that's a really good point. He can't. His, <laughs> his bad back though. He can't it's lift anything either. It's all, better. it's all better. He's fine. He still complains about it. Um, do you think he he'll? Hasn't, he I, hasn't needed any. Do you think he'll realize that there's something going? Like that is so unlike her. It is. Do you think he'll look through it or hide it and say he got rid of it and wait till she says something? So I was going to say he hasn't needed Joseph's help for anything lately. <laughs> because he, but Joseph but, helped him make all that furniture. Yeah, but uh, he didn't need any help lifting. Did you notice that Joseph was not in this episode? He was missing. I, from, yeah, you're right. 
he was missing from the entire episode. I went, oh my goodness, where is Viv? Where's our Viv? You know, <laughs> but, but anyway, I think, I think it's going to get pushed to a corner. I don't think Lee's going to get rid of it because with his practical thinking, he might think, we could empty this out and it would be a nice well, that trunk. was my thought. I was like, get it's rid of the stuff trunk. in it. It looks like a nice trunk. Yeah. Pack, pack some stuff for the baby when you go on your first voyage with the baby. I don't or, know. Or, 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 or again, throw the stuff out if you don't need it and give the trunk to someone who might need a trunk. Like it, again, it looks like a very a nice trunk. trunk. Those are, those are worth a pretty penny. Yeah. I so, wish I had a nice trunk. Yeah, I know. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking that he's probably because he just kind of blew it off. He's like, okay, sure. Mm -hmm. So he's he senses that something's off, but it's not bothering him enough mm -hmm. to go and investigate. I think his mind is wrapped up on a few more important things lately. But, okay. But okay. I think it will come up again. So yeah. I think for now it's gonna get pushed to a corner of the attic we'll worry about this later and then maybe it'll come up again maybe uh-oh uh-oh uh -oh. I, I, I i've i've got a seed i've got a seed got a, got a thought. okay i have What's a your scene. thought i have i have a seed of a scene <laughs> oh my gosh there's a new hashtag for a seed of a scene <laughs> um, okay I'm waiting. I have Rosemary in the rocking chair that Lee and Joseph made rocking the baby and getting this very thoughtful and lost look on her face and then saying, <laughs> doing it. <laughs> You're just patting the baby. There you go. Hey, I'm an actor. <laughs> go for it. Yeah. I have to act these things out and just saying, Lee. Would you please go get that green trunk? And he brings it down and she sits in, she sits in the chair and holds the baby and he takes the stuff out. Huh. That's what I see. Now I just need I like to get that into a really quick fan fiction story before it happens so that I can have it written down first. All right. Okay. Good luck with that. Yeah. Um, another possibility <laughs> well, is that it is- The kids start school next week, so I might have time to write. So. I might. Um, the only other thing I think is maybe it's pushed off to the corner, like you said, she's busy with the baby and asks somebody to get something for her from- a trunk but there's two trunks and they open the wrong one Ooh. to grab it and they go oh are these Momentous. your baby photos or whatever it might be is this whatever it might be i don't know maybe it's letters from her and she's been trying to contact her and she has and she hasn't answered call the postables <laughs> Well, no, they've been delivered. I'm they saying like <laughs> mom has sent Rosemary correspondence. I had to say mother. it. I'm, I'm sorry. I she's had to not, say it. I know, I know. I know. Um, and she's like refusing to reply. Okay. I'm going to put, I'm going to marry those two ideas and I'm going to write them in the same story. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and I almost don't think it's Lee. I almost think it's Elizabeth that accidentally opens it. That, yeah. Because so, I think she'd honestly, I not that she would shut Lee out, but I think in the moment, she'd just be like, no, I'm not dealing with it. But I think Elizabeth would have just the right touch because she's had that conversation with her already about her mom. Uh-huh that she would have just the right thing to say to get her to open up about it a bit. So I see Elizabeth being the one to accidentally open it. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Because she would realize when she saw it, what it was knowing that they've had that conversation. And right. it's not that she and Lee haven't had conversations. They might have also had conversations about it right. that we don't know about. 
so I see I see Elizabeth being the one to accidentally open the trunk and maybe they share if it's letters one letter and then she says that's enough I can't I can't do anymore or maybe half of a letter and she can't get through it and then later what I would really hope is that she would share it with Lee Oh, that absolutely. She would, that absolutely. she would open up. And so we can do the more thorough digging with yeah. Lee. Another thought I just had is okay. she hasn't even opened them. The letters? Oh, I I would assume not. But yeah. she's but she's too afraid to get rid of them. Yeah. Yeah. But how would her mother know where to find her? So that's that's another interesting thing. She might know who Charlotte. She might. I don't know. There are a lot of maybes. <laughs> and we I think believe you woman, with that. I would just say that a woman of Rosemary's status and the fact that she's done so many productions and things like that and is now the editor of the newspaper, I, I feel like if you tried, you could find her. If yeah, you're trying to find her. There was no Google. <laughs> no, but there were Pinkertons and there were, you know, I mean, there, it wouldn't have been really hard to go, you know, a famous actress, like where, right. where this famous well, actress moved to, like she. Well, and her father is a Mountie. You go to Mountie headquarters. Boom. I, I feel like there would have been probably a way. There had to have been a way. I, I feel like you wouldn't be able to track anybody back then, but I feel like somebody whose name was in papers and was yeah. a performer and was... You would have to know where to find them. You you would, I, I would think you'd be able to. And other people found her. Like the people found her that in the early season that thought she'd stolen their money. Like, I mean, right. there's, the, there's a trail. And the moving picture company found her. Moving picture company found her and there would have been wedding announcements and newspapers and I, I feel like it wouldn't have been impossible very true to find someone of her status mm -hmm. all right so parties we left you with a mystery <laughs> this this turned into a mystery instead of a rom-com rom -com. <laughs> <laughs> so we will leave you with that We'll let the wheels of your mind turn while ours turn. <laughs> and let's, let's see what we come up with and let's see what they give us next time, right? Sounds good. <laughs> and with that, we will leave you and we hope that you have a fabulous morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you're listening to this. Have a great day and let the love in your heart, let your hope blossom. Bye, Bye honey. <laughs>